Hello everyone, welcome to Court with Chrissy. Today we visit Judge Simpson, and up first, the defendant that needs no introduction. The man, the myth, the legend, who now has a driver's license, Mr. Harris. And that'll be followed by someone who's new here. But Judge Simpson helps her break it all down, and also breaks the news that she has new charges in another court. I hope you like it. Court with Chrissy is now in session. Court calls the case, People versus Corey Harris. Conrad Sewell on behalf of Pittsfield Township. May it please this honorable court, Dion Webster Cox on behalf of Corey Harris. And we have good news. All right. Yeah, I know. Go ahead. I'll let you say it. My client has his license, Your Honor. It's fine. <laughs> He's had it for a while. Yes, and see, we what did we do? We moved forward, focused on the positive, and now here we are. We can proudly stand before this court and say we did it. Okay, we did yes, it. So, he did. Yes, we all did. It was a collaborative effort. So twenty four years late, but we did it. <laughs> we did it. We, we got did. there. We're here. Congratulations, so, Mr. Harris. Thank you. So, Better late than never. That's right. Wasn't I saying that at the beginning? I was. <laughs> Absolutely. That's all I wanted. I told you that from the very beginning, Mr. Harris. All I wanted to do is get your license. Exactly. And thank you. I just wish it could have. <sighs> thank you. You're welcome. You just helped me out speed speed up the process a little bit faster. Thank you. You're you were hard headed though. Yes, I am. Yeah, you were hard headed, right? My mother and my and my wife tell tells me this daily that you're hard headed. Yes, yes, and you showed it to not only me but the whole world <laughs> that you were hard headed. And all I wanted to do, if you had left that first day, you know, after the first hearing, I I had to I revoked your bond. You came here. You do follow what I said. And I didn't have, you know, because I didn't really have a problem with you. If after you had left the jail, and if you had just gone to the second, did what you did, we'd have been done with this so long ago. Really. And, and ultimately, when it all said and done, that's all I wanted. That, that is all I wanted. I just needed you to have your license. Mission accomplished. So, and it feels good, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it feels good. You're not looking over your shoulder all the time, right? Exactly. It's amazing how that works. All right. And I did not that I'm a social media person because I don't watch social media, but I saw him do his little dance out there in front of the Secretary of State. That was after his training, after he passed the test. After he passed the test. So we were documenting the process. Right? And, and as long as, and I knew, so like I said on the record, I kind of said it a little quip and a little starky and probably shouldn't have said it that way. But I knew if he just passed a written test, the driving thing wasn't going to be a problem because he had been doing that for 24 years. So it didn't, hey, he was going to be able to pass that part. <laughs> All right. So... So we're, With the newly vamped Mr. Harris. Yeah, and we're all happy about that. So I will keep my promise. And if he would like to admit double parking today, he can do that. And if you accept it, Your Honor, I move to dismiss the more serious misdemeanor charge. And he will absolutely admit responsibility to double parking right. on that faithful and sober. Mr. Harris. Second place here. Mr. Harris, on do you admit responsibility to the fact that on October 7th, 2023, location of Ellsworth Road near Laura Road, Pittsfield Township, Washtenaw County, State of Michigan, that you double parked in my vehicle? Yes. Satisfied. The court will accept the defendant's plea to count two. Count one is dismissed. Anything you want to say before I impose fines and costs? Uh, Your Honor, my client has, uh, I'm asking that the fines be um, 
as much as this court can, because he he and his wife are both um, out of work and they've been working diligently trying to find work. But um, it's just things are financially the margins are. And as a result, we're just asking that court, in addition to what the court has already done. That. So after all this, you're asking me to do something nice? I am. You know I'm going to ask. That's what I do. Oh. Do I do nice things? I don't. No, I don't. <laughs> want thanks. thanks for volunteering that path. <laughs> Mr. Harris? Yes, sir. Throughout this whole thing, outside of the driver's license, everything else. Tell me what you learned that you think makes you a better person now. What I've learned is, it's just pretty much stay focused, stay on task, and do not look back and just go on out here and just handle, handle things right then and there. And then that way, I don't have to worry about any, anything crazy later. And thank you very, very much for teaching, teaching me that hard lesson. One day we'll meet out on the street under better circumstances. Just keep your car in the lane. Don't be running into my truck. Oh. All right. <laughs> so I'm a very good, good I'm a driver. I know we have 20 some odd years of you doing that. That's actually pretty good. All right. Fines and costs of $180. Mr. Harris, I don't know why I'm doing this. It is absolutely against my better thought, but. I'm going to do it. I'm going to waive the entirety of the 180 and um, fines and costs. Thank you. You're Thank all you. set. Thank You're you, Ron. Can I shake your arm? I know. I hope you can touch them. Why do you say that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. All right. All right. You're welcome. Just do the right thing. Take care. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. That's all your people around the courtroom waiting for you? Did they think you were going to get locked up again? <laughs> That's your daughter. That's her. Her daughter. This is my wife. That's your wife. So she came to make sure you didn't get locked up again. <laughs> she kept you straight. All right. Oh, yeah. Little. <laughs> yeah, okay. Take care. Court does call the case. People versus Ebony Woodset. Call the case. People versus Bonnie Weisner. That's got to be you because I don't have many files left. That's you yeah. <laughs> Come on up to the podium. So I actually don't entirely know how this process works. Of course, I've seen court TV and um, I've been in courtrooms before, but um, I haven't been in trouble with the law. All right. Slow down a minute. Okay. We'll walk you through. A little it. nervous. I, I can tell. <laughs> All right. All right. So here's what you do. Take a deep breath, relax a little bit, okay? All right. Okay. So first of all, state your name for the record, please. Bonnie Lynn Wisner. All right. Okay. So, Ms. Wisner, you're, you're here on a misdemeanor complaint, okay? Yeah. And this, what's happening at this point is what's called the arraignment. And at the arraignment, I'm going to go through it. I'm going to tell you what you're charged with tell you what the maximum penalties are. Make sure you understand all of that. This is not a point at which I'm asking you to either admit anything or anything like that, okay? 
And then I'm going to have a couple questions for you. Got that? Uh, yes. May, oh. may I, uh, will I be able to at least tell you well, hold what, on. What and why? Or? Hold on a moment. Okay. And then we'll we'll get to what we can get to. Okay. Because here's the thing. Since you're charged with a criminal offense, I don't want you saying a whole lot to me because anything you say can be used against you. Okay. And so I don't want you to fall into that position. Okay. Okay. All right. So what I do is kind of directed it at certain things that we got to make sure. Okay. okay? Ma'am, you are before the court on a complaint, misdemeanor complaint that alleges that on or about March 26, 2024, at the location of Carpenter Road in Pittsfield Township, Washtenaw County, State of Michigan, that you did operate a motor vehicle while intoxicated by a controlled substance. Do you understand the nature of that charge? Yes, I do. All right. I believe I do. Pardon? I, I believe I do. Like I said, I've, uh, I haven't been in this situation. I get you. But do you understand what you're charged with? Um, you're charged with operating while intoxicated by a controlled substance. Right. Okay. So you understand what you're charged with? Um, I do understand. Uh, okay, hold on. Before you go to the next thing. I'm not asking you whether or not you did it, whether you think you're guilty of I'm not asking any of that. I just have to make sure that you understand what you're charged with. I, I, um, I do. I, uh, okay. All right. I, I do. That is a misdemeanor. It's punishable by up to 93 days in jail, up to a $500 fine plus court costs. The court could also order community service as well as any rehabilitative services the court deems necessary. The court could also order your vehicle immobilized, could order you to pay the cost of the prosecution, as well as the cost of any emergency governmental services. You understand the maximum penalties and what the court could do. Um, the ones that you just explained are what they could do. What the court could do, yes, ma'am. Yeah. I understand. You understand that. Okay. Now I've got a very important question for you. And my first question to you is, do you want to be represented by an attorney to help you through this process? I believe that would be best. And I'm looking at you. You're looking at me like, yes, it is the best. Um, like I said, I've never been in this position before. Exactly. That's one of the reasons that an attorney can help you with what the process is and the like. Okay. Ms. Pate, this is a public defender case. Excuse me. Just a under Natalie Payton on behalf of Ms. Wisner, we would waive any further reading of the complaint, stand mute, and ask for a pretrial date, please. Uh -huh. And then having waived formal reading, standing mute, the court will enter a not guilty plea on her behalf. Pre-trial in this matter will be adjourned to August 21st, 2024, 9 a.m., or as your invite indicates. All right. Yes. Okay. So... Mr. Siller, I don't necessarily, I don't think I see it on the complaint. It, it's not, Your Honor. It just says controlled substance. The substance was hydrocodone, known as Vicodin. Okay. She, there's no crash. However, she was passed out of the wheel in the roadway. Okay. Okay. So what I will do is I will set the defendant bond at a $5,000 personal recognizance bond. I'm going to order standard conditions, including no assault to behavior or weapons. I'm going to indicate there's to be no use of any alcohol, okay. recreational marijuana, or any illegal drug. You understand that, ma'am? Yes, I do. All right. But I am uh, going to. May I ask a question? Certainly. Um, so I, uh, I'm driving around with a temporary license. They took my license and gave me a paper license. Correct. It's called a 625G permit. Yes. Okay. 
I'm just wondering um, under what circumstances um, or how long it takes to get my normal license back. I, uh, have I had... don't think you're going to be, get your normal license back until this is resolved. I think you will have that. Okay. It, that that's a short answer to that. But question. it says on the this is what's confusing is it says on the permit seventy seven days or something like that. It, it, I didn't even see that. Okay. What I saw was this: you are legally able to drive your license was not confiscated but it was okay you're you're able to still legally drive mm -hmm. on that permit on that piece with that piece of paper right okay okay your physical license was taken yes but that did not affect your driving privileges okay so you can drive you have the privilege to drive you just don't have that license okay i i do have a, a question for you okay yeah i'm so sorry i, I no, it's like okay. I, I, it's okay um you um i was a uh, victim of domestic violence and um and actually you were one of my only saving graces ever that kept my kids and I in my house. And I thank you. And uh, sorry, I'm trying not to be an emotional mess, but um, the, the reason that I was on any prescription. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It's ma'am. And just listen, it's not that I don't want to hear from you. I just, like I said before, I don't want you to say anything that might incriminate you or could be used against you. And I think that's why Miss Pate was whispering in your ear. I don't want you to say anything about the case at this point. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Probably have a lot to say, but that. This, but I'm allowed. This, I am allowed to drive. My understanding is that you should be allowed to drive and I will just double check it. Your, my record indicates that your license is valid with the, your privilege to drive is valid okay. with the 625 G permit, which is that piece of paper that they gave you. Oh, okay. Um, so, should I obtain a state ID? Then? Ma I can't advise you as to anything. I will just say this, because of this last case, you cannot have both. So you can't have a Michigan driver's license and a state ID. So I'm gonna, oh. that's a question I'm gonna let and counsel I, answer for you. I didn't know. No, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. There's a lot of things people don't know. And that's probably why you had the question. But you got a great group of attorneys. Let them let them answer some of your questions. Okay, that may be part of the problem. There's an arraignment in pretrial when August twenty first on this one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you got another operating while intoxicated case. Do you you're aware of that? No, I'm not. Okay. You said that's at 14. 14 an arraignment pre-trial. Do you have an offense date on that? Yes. April 21st of this year. Okay. Okay. So ma'am. I had moved and maybe I didn't get mail. I, I don't that, know. That may very well be. I'm just letting you know you have another OWI at 14A2, our, my, our sister core in Ipsy. Okay. That's set for April 21st 
or not April 20th, August, August 21st. Okay. Okay. So you might want to check into that. She's got an arraignment in pretrial on that one. Okay. So does that, that just lists the charge. I can't tell if that's alcohol or drugs. Correct. Yeah, I can. Well, what's. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. All right. That's that's okay. We'll let them deal with that. So just so that your counsel see so you have a context to it, at least what we see. This incident happens end of March. April 21st, 1482 one half. Okay. So there's some context to it. Thank you. All right. So no alcohol, recreational marijuana, or any illegal drugs. No, ma'am. What I'm going to also order is that you report over to the Department of Community Corrections for drug testing. Okay. So if you have prescription medications that you're legally entitled to take, Yes. Make sure you have those prescriptions or copy prescriptions with you to give to community corrections. Or the the bottle, is that what you're saying? Or Pardon? The, the bottle or actually have it printed? They'll tell you what they'll need in exact, okay? But I'm just saying be prepared. Like if you have prescriptions that you're taking that they may ask for proof that you're on those prescriptions. Okay. Okay. And so I'm signing that order and you'll be required to take a test one time per week randomly on any given day that they set. Okay? Okay. All right. I think that's it. I will see you on the 21st. Oh, well, hold on. I better not set it on the 21st. Yeah, she already has another date on that. According to the complaint, the other case is hydro code. Same thing. Okay. Yes, thank you. Okay. So... I'm going to move this one to the 9th or September 4th. Okay, so you'll come back on September 4th to see me. Be, I don't want to set it to 21st because she's got the arraignment pretrial in Ypsilanti on that day. Okay, and also so counsel is aware that case, well, a few days after this one also involves hydrocarbon. Thank you, guys. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you.